Hello and welcome back. Three things I want to quickly point out from analyzing this presentation on site plans. One is context. Always locate the surrounding buildings. Number two is shadows. Always try as much as you can to implement shadows. And number three is use of vegetation and soft landscape to beautify your site plan. We'll be creating our presentation site plan in 10 steps. Step one, we'll create our site layout and design the site. On that project browser, you go to site, double click to go to site view. The first thing I want to do is to draw out my property line. On that massing and site, you click on property line. There are two ways to draw property line by entering distances and bearing and by sketching. I have a video here where you can see how to create property line, entering distances and bearing. You can click on that. For this video, I'm going to use create by sketching. So let's say you imported um, a survey plan from AutoCAD, you can sketch on top of it. Click on create property line by sketching, click on the line and then go ahead and uh, press. After that, make sure it's a continuous and closed line so that it can calculate the square area. Click on finish. It's a site plan so I just want to hide some of the things that I will not be needing. Select over one of these icons, right click, say hide in view by category to hide the elevation icons. We might not need the grid lines also, so we can right click, hide in view by category to hide this. These are the knot arrows, controls the project knot and the true knot. I might not want it to show, so you can also hide by element. Use the tab key to select it with your mouse over it if it doesn't select. And I'm just going to go ahead to design the site plan. I'll use floors to create the different driveways, landscape, and pedestrian walkways around the site. On the architecture, I'll click on floor, select floor architectural. There are some different floors in my template here, but I'm just going to recreate one of them to show you how to duplicate and rename the floor. So you can click on floor, like the generic floor on your template, click on edit type click on duplicate to take the floor and rename it I always rename with prefix to keep the project organized now once you duplicate a floor it enables you to edit that floor without destroying the original floor in the template I just want to edit one thing in the floor so I'll click on the structure on that structure I'll click on edit the edit assembly dialog box pops out under the material column Click on it. There is this three tiny dots here. This box. Click on it. This takes you into the material browser where you can change the materials of the default floor. For now, we are not creating materials, but I'm just going to pick something that looks dark. This roofing EPDM membrane. Click on OK. Click on OK. Click on OK. So this is how I created these different floors. The first one to create is for the driveway. So click on boundary line. Click on line to sketch. Click on WF to allow me to see in wireframe mode uh, the floor plan beneath the roof plan. So I can draw the driveway to the entrance of the building and create some space for parking around the building. Now when you are drawing a floor, it's always important that the line is continuous and enclosed. If the line intersects each other like this and you click finish sketch, it's going to give you an error. So you click continue and you use the trim line to trim the edges. We use the fillet arc to establish curved edges by clicking on the two lines and adjusting the temporal dimension. Click on the two lines. Once the curve comes out, you click to place. Click on the temporal dimension to adjust. And once you are done, you click finish sketch. So I've clicked, I've created the first floor. I'm going to go ahead to create the green area around the floor and then create the walkway using the same method. So after I finish sketching this, I'm just going to offset it by 100 mm so that the two floors do not um, overlap on each other. Now I finished designing the site, you can turn on hidden lines. If you come down here on that graphic display option and select consistent colors, you can see that different floor types have different finishes because I applied different materials when I duplicated them. So this is the first step to create the site layout. We'll go back to hidden lines. The next step after creating the site layout is to place your work on sheet and set your graphics. I always like to place my work on sheets before setting my graphics because if you do that, you avoid reworking a lot of times. So you come on that sheet, right click, click on new sheet, select a plane. If you want to learn how to create sheets in Revit, I have a video linked up there, you can check it out. To place works on sheet, 
click on site drag it into the sheet and then click to place the first thing you want to do after placing any work on sheet is to set the scale so at this scale the scale one is 200 you double click to activate the view and uh, we can reduce it to like one is to 200 um, it allows us to plan areas around the site uh, we can make this one is to 250 to give us enough space to set our site in context so it depends on how much site you have around your property so you may want to um, make your scale bigger or smaller. While the site is deactivated, drag it down, select the site and then reduce the distance of this line. Double click to activate the view and then we'll go about setting up the graphics with override graphics in view like we did in the floor plans. I'm going to start with the property line, right click, select override graphics in view by element. I'm going to projection lines, set the pattern change the color to something like red to be more visible and set the thickness to 9 uh, thereabouts so that when I zoom out of the sheet I can appreciate it. We can use the override tool to override graphics in view or we can just come here and select consistent color and the colors of the elements will come out and we may not necessarily need to override graphics in view. For some people they might want to use field region to represent the edges of the building. That is also okay. For other people they might just want to leave it that way. So if we're going to use field region, let me just use that for now. We'll go to annotate, click on region, the arrow beside it, click on field region, use a rectangular box select over where the building is you can set your lines to wide lines the field region here is um, solid gray depending on what you have in your design you can pick anything you can also override graphics in view for it if you want also by element we have projection lines for the field region if you want to make your building stand out you also have surface pattern foreground for example if i want to have a hatch on it so you can actually apply a hatch for your building to come out the next thing we want to do is to, in setting up our graphics, you can turn on our shadows, which is very important, like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the video. To set your shadows, click on the graphic display options, select it, and under lighting, you can control the, how dark or how bright the shadow is from the shadows icon. I might want to keep it around 60 for the site plan, so that it's not too faded. Uh, the ambient light and the, the sun intensity can also be controlled. You can tick smooth lines with anti-aliasing to make your work has a smoother finish. So we can use some settings to adjust the directions of the shadow. Uh, I've covered this in other videos. Adjusting this and tweaking it around will enable you to tweak your shadows. I want to make sure that the building stands out. So I'll select the other floors within the site and uh, I'll make them half tone. Vary graphics in view by element and select half tone so that the building stands out and the property stands out and every other thing it's sort of in the background so th with this we've set up our graphics i would like to override the graphics in view for the green area so you select go to the edge you can use the tab key to select it right click override graphics in view by element i can use a different solid fill and apply a different color that is um, less saturated so that it doesn't conflict with the site. I can also do that uh, for the driveway. Select the floor override graphics in view by element. Um, select a solid fill and maybe use a gray. So since it's half tone, it's just going to be a little bit faded behind the building. So we'll move over to the next step. The next step for us is to design the context around our site so that our presentation plan becomes much more beautiful. There are various ways to do this. We can open up Google Earth, uh, download an image around the site, edit the image and place it beneath our site plan, or we can sketch and model it using floors and other Revit tools. So let's just go ahead with the second option. Basically using the same method I used to create the, the roads in the site to create the roads outside of the site. So after drawing the first set of lines, I'll click on the offset. Offset it, let's say, by 7 meters. Um, have the roads go all the way. And if you are creating floors, like I mentioned, you should always try and make sure that the lines are continuous and not intersecting. You can use the trim tool to trim off the lines to ensure that they are continuous lines. You can see we have an open edge here, so I'm just going to draw this. 
three minutes and keep it within the sheet of the borderline of the sheet. After that, we use the fillet tool to get these edges, and um, like I said, the temporary dimensions appears, and you can uh, adjust them before moving over to the next fillet. After doing this, I'll ensure that it's the right type of road network, which is the driveway I created. Now click on finish and click on save. It's always good to save to avoid losing your data. So after creating the road networks, we can just create as much details as we can to explain um, what is happening. I'm using lines to create imaginary plots around the site. Depending on how beautiful you want to make this, uh, you are free to explore a lot of options. So I use the pick lines to pick edges. So I want to just create a small flower bed along the road. As you sketch in Revit, you can explore the sketch tools, enable you to do a lot of things there. I create some green areas. Uh, I'll override graphics in view by element. I can set it to half tone, uh, increase the transparency. I want to show you how to place blocks of buildings to better set your building in context. You go to Component, click on Model in Place, and select Caseworks, click on OK. We can name this as Building Blocks. We use the Solid Extrusion tool to create extruded blocks. We we'll click on it, we can select Rectangle if we have angular buildings. We can use the lines to also sketch irregular buildings. We can create various extrusions so that we can have buildings with various heights. So this is one. I'll repeat the process by just typing CS on my keyboard. That's great similar. I can go ahead and create any other type of uh, form I wish to create for, to just portray the context of work around the site. After creating the extrusion, you can select them and adjust the height. So this is 5 meters, I can make this one, let's say, 10 meters and they, they will have longer shadows than this other one. I will select this, override graphics in view by elements, I will half tone them. Secondly, I just want them to be filled white, just slightly off-white as the case may be, so that they don't take away from the major building in the project. You can work out the edges of the building, the projection lines, whichever color you choose and however thick you want to make them. So that you can define the edges of the building with override graphics in view, you are free to do that. After creating the surrounding buildings and looking at the project right now, you discover that the shadows from the surrounding buildings are becoming too dark and taking away focus from the main site. So we can reduce the shadows. Go to the graphic display options, click on it and under lighting, we can reduce the shadows to some somewhere around 30. I can also reduce the height of these other blocks so that the shadows do not extend too far. And I might also want to make this green area here less half tone so that it stands out a little bit more. The next thing I want to do is to apply trees and vegetation which is a very important part of the site plan. There are two ways to do this. You can apply 3D trees or you can import 2D blocks if you have enough library or you can go to Revit City to download some components or any Revit component online. Other architecture, you go to component, place a component, load family. Uh, I have some trees already loaded, so I'm just going to go through uh, some of the library or 3D model trees I have. This is a tree. It has its own shadow, so it make, makes it more realistic. But uh, a side warning is that you have to have a fairly strong laptop with good graphics card and enough RAM space. One thing I've done which might not be right is that I've filled up my entire site. I can actually use the crop view to turn on the crop view um, to crop out some areas so that I can uh, even find some space to um, put some annotation um, around the site. So that is also very important. So I can turn this off, hide the space. Under annotate, you can use the text tool here, adjust the size as needed, and then type in the name of the site, access road, and any other thing you think it's important to help in your presentation. So you can also add an arrow and move to annotate here. 
from Revit 2023, you can export. They have added the option of PDFs right in Revit, so you don't need to print the PDF. But I still just want to export as images, so I'll select image. The zoom to option, zoom to 100% of actual size. The raster image at 150. Current window, these other settings are good. I'll select the destination of where I'm saving my image to, and then I'll click on OK. And uh, basically, that's that. So this is what we've created our presentation site plan in Revit. So this can be a stepping stone and you can use this to create um, other wonderful presentation site plans. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.